Hi guys, this is Devin with Easy Riders, and today we're going to be setting up a 500 watt classic cruiser by Coastal Cruisers. What I like to have to set this up, a box cutter and a pair of scissors to help open the box up. Also, a pair of heavy duty snips to help take off the packaging. Uh, a couple wrenches, probably an adjustable one is handy too. And a set of Allen keys, and you can do a power drill to make things look easier. It's important to make sure that as you cut down the side of the box, you take out anything inside so you don't accidentally cut them. Then you can open up the box and lay everything down. So you've got a nice clean surface to work on. Later, inside here uh, is going to be the charger, the pedals, and the light. There's some tools in there if you don't have your own, um, but we'll want to hang on to this stuff later. What I like to do is use some heavy duty snips to cut off all of the packaging. Uh, taking great caution to make sure that you don't put up any of the wires. Front fender you can set aside for later. One thing I like to do to make it a little bit easier as we move forward is taking out the battery. Uh, there'll be a key attached to it. And as you turn, push in and turn, you can see there's a little nub that allows the battery to slide out. And again, you can put this off to the side for later. Once the packaging is all removed, um, I will set the bike up on its front like this, right? And, and I like to leave these on while you're doing it, and you'll see why later because we're going to flip it upside down. Um, and put this stem piece right in there. And from there, you can tighten it. Snap this bolt on the top here. Well, secure the handlebars. You don't need to go too tight. We'll go back through and tighten everything up completely after, but at least that'll get you started. From there, tighten up the front handlebars so that they're, they're tilted up, because we're gonna flip the bike upside down and we're gonna rest it on the handles. That's why we're leaving the packaging on the handles, and that's why we're tilting it up a little bit more than you'd normally ride with. Next move, over on the back. Be cautious of the rear fender not to scratch it. And then you can let it rest on the handlebars and on the rear rack. Take out these little screws so you can attach the fender. I like to attach it this side first. Again, don't tighten it all the way, leave it a little bit loose. You can go back and tighten it later. And same thing here. Sometimes you gotta make sure that they go in completely threaded correctly. If you're forcing it, don't force it, stop, try to go in again. You don't want to strip out the inside of this because then it's a real pain to, to fix. Again, not completely tight. And then down here, I'm gonna take this part off. 
and how this works, you put the, there's a little washer there, it's a bolt, that will just go in through the light. That goes in through this, the frame of the fork, and then the fender will seat behind it. From there, you can screw that on. And this is where the adjustable wrench comes in handy to hold that down tight. And this is where I take the tightener up to follow it. Again, you can do this by hand, but obviously I prefer not to. At this time, I like to attach the, plug it in. Uh, there is a correct way to do it. There you go. Until it clicks. And just push that in. And your light's set up. Next, loosen these guys up. Take this off. This is just to prevent the fender, the front fork from bending during shipping. From there, you unscrew that. And this part, you unscrew that. It's a little tricky to get off, so sometimes I just tap it a little bit. And that plastic piece will come off. Again, that's just protection for while it's shipping. You want to screw these almost all the way out. Make sure all three nuts are on the outside. And then you can put it through here. Uh, this one's got a little protective piece and it breaks. You can take that away. And you're going to want to slide that in. Now, if you see here, there's little holes where these locking nuts will go in. And you just want to make sure that this slides in over there and that piece goes in that hole. Tight, I'm gonna make sure it's lifted. Uh, and you might hear some fumbling around here. Again, we'll address that later. Most importantly, get this guy nice and tight. Same over here. Nice and tight. Good. Then we'll go back and do a final tightening of all these bolts here. Make sure the fender's in tight. That's good. And that Here we're gonna add on the pedals. Now this is something that people overlook all the time. That there is a right and a left pedal. As you can see here, there's an R and an L stamped into there. You definitely want to make sure that you're putting them on the correct side of the crank. If you don't, you try to force it, it'll strip and it's not good. Um, so again, don't force anything. If it goes in smoothly, you got it. If not, try again. So this is where I would miss it. Um, you The quick way I like to do this is just putting them in, spinning this around so you're not so you're not closing anything by the bike. Same here, you can get this one in and then just kind of hold them and spin so they go in. And again, same as on the front, we want this to be nice and tight. If you don't tighten them up, the, so you can get loose in there and the steel pedal can um, strip out the aluminum crank. There you go, nice and tight. There you go, pedal.
slides down on the rail. Uh, one turn will lock it so you can take the key out. One's locked in the frame. Uh, second turn, we'll turn it on. From here you can see there's a quick read battery meter. It kind of shows you the power of the battery. Finally, we have your seat. It's a quick release seat. So you can just open that up, put that down again, and you find your desired height. You can turn that a little bit so that's loose. And then tighten that back up here. So I'm going to take a tighten it up pretty good here. And then I kind of want to that there for my height. And you're all set. Last thing you need to do is just pump up the tires and we're ready to go. So the tires will show you uh, how much pressure they should have in them. So this one says a uh, minimum of 30, uh, maximum of 80. I like to run it about, you know, 50, 60. I like a firmer tire, especially for these road bikes. tuned up from the factory. Um, that being said, again, same as the brakes, some things can kind of shift. They're brand new. This is something that I'd recommend bringing into a local bike shop. Uh, you know, maybe after about a month or so of riding, have them tune it up so that way your bike's running fine. You might not need to, but it is one of those things that does need some manual adjustment at the time as things start to loosen up. Uh, since these are hydraulic brakes, you don't need to adjust the brakes at all. Again, they should come set from the factory. If they're feeling a little bit too soft for your liking, again, you can bring them to a bike shop and uh, your local bike shop should be happy to uh, bleed the brakes out a little bit, uh, make them a little bit firmer for you, add some fluid in. The power button, your settings button, and then your up and down for the uh, pedal assist. Right over here, we've got a bell. Uh, got a bell, you your seven speed Shimano gears, so to go down, you push it, push this knob up, to go up in gear, you just click that once, again down, and click that to go up, and then this is your thumb throttle. So as you turn it on, you see the screen come on life, right? It's going to show your battery power right there, your light indicator, your pedal assist, your mileage, your mode, as well as your speed. Now your bike is set up and ready to ride. Have fun, ride safe.